great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, in fact, I'm also working for uh, part-time for Bitergia, which is a company producing a part of the software. But in any case, what I'm going to talk to you is about uh, two free software projects, which are Metrix Grimoire and MBS Grimoire. Uh, the, the basic idea behind both of them is that uh, in free software projects, in free software development, there are a lot of things to measure. And uh, we want free software tools for doing that measuring. So that's, that's the basic idea. Uh, in fact, all of you, mainly uh, those of you that are developers, know that there is a lot of information, not only about the, the code, which everybody knows, the code is out there, but there is also a lot of information about the community, how the community interacts, mailing lists or in backtracking systems, how the development has been done uh, in the commit records and in code review tools, things like that. Uh, our projects are putting that information out there for transparency and for many other reasons. Once the information is there, we can, anyone can, uh, retrieve, organize, and analyze it. The fact is, up to now, we don't have many free software tools for doing the task. In the last years, we have started to have some of them. There are also some proprietary systems, some proprietary tools doing the thing. Well, the, the idea of metrics, grimoire, and this grimoire is to provide a path for any one of you who want to analyze either your own project or any other project. And of course, all of you are also welcome to join and develop new tools in the same uh, uh, framework. So uh, the problem with uh, uh, data in the free software repositories is that, first of all, it lives in repositories which are, were not designed to be mined. So uh, it was designed to do development, and getting the information out of them is not always easy. Depends on the repository. In some cases, it's very much easy. In some others, it's quite difficult. Uh, so we need tools for retrieve information. That's basically Matrix Grimoire. Matrix Grimoire are going to extract uh, data from uh, repositories like Git or Baxilla and put them into a database. And then, once you have the, the data into a database, data has many complexities and, and, and many details. For instance, you have a bots committing, and bots are different than persons. Or you have persons committing with different identities, and you want to track persons and not identities. Or you have, uh, I don't know, uh, back reports um, on, the, on the federal requests in the same issue tracking system, and you want to tell one uh, a part of the others. So uh, you have many complexities, many details that you have to deal with. So that's the tools that we use to analyze the database after you have the data into um, the database. That's this, this grimoire. Uh, as I will tell you later. So the, the matrix grimoire, remember, downloading information from uh, repositories, put it into a database, is mainly three tools. CVS Anali, which uh, is dealing with source code management systems. So right now can work with CVS, Subversion, Git. You know, there is a limited support for Bazaar. Bicho, who is working with the main uh, issue tracking systems. And MLStats, which is working with either uh, mailing list in inbox format if they are local, or mail man archives if they are remote. Uh, basically, we put all of that into a MySQL database, uh, and we analyze the software with oh, free software. You have the URL down there if you want to check out the, at the code. Uh, talking a bit about the main tools, first of all, you have CVS Anali, which is the older one, by the way. Uh, basically, go through the source code management repository, the Git repository, the subversion repository, and get all the meta information. I mean, uh, all the information, the commit records, who made the commit, when, made, when, uh, uh, when the commit was made, the comment in the commit, and also can get metrics for every release of every file. So that means that we run some, to some tools that calculate those metrics, and you can th now think like the uh, Maccabi complexity or the size of uh, its file for all the history of that file. So with that, basically we produce some tables that, can, uh, that are suitable for specific analysis. You can do very, uh, uh, quite simple tool, quite, sorry, quite simple queries, like uh, give me the commits per month for all the projects, for instance. But you can do much more complex things. I will show you uh, later some of them. Uh, as I said, it supports uh, mainly CVS subversion in Git, but bizarre partly. Uh, writing a backend is not that difficult. Somebody is interested in completing the Bazaar uh, backend or uh, building one for Mercurial, for instance, that would be great. Uh, basically, the whole history of the project is in the, in the database once you have downloaded it. So you don't need the repository anymore. You can work with the database. Uh, support for tags, branches, and the usual stuff in, in source code management repositories. And has an extension system, which means that you can add 
extensions for doing a specific canes of the downloads or interface to all the systems, things like that. And right now it's supporting MySQL and uh, SQLite. Bicho is a tool for retrieving information from uh, issue tracking system, back tracking repositories and the like. Uh, again, storing the results in a MySQL database, and usually it's using the API of the, uh, of the tools, I mean of the uh, um, uh, back tracking systems. Um, it works with uh, uh, SourceForge, with Baxilla, uh, like the uh, different flavors of it, like the Genome you know, Baxilla or the Kitty Baxilla or some, some others. And also it works with Jira, Google Code, Lura, et cetera, et cetera. So the idea is quite simple. You go to the repository, ask for all the tickets, the, the reference to all the tickets, and then go one by one getting the ticket and all the changes to the ticket. So that you get the whole history of all the tickets in the system, and you can later again analyze it and so on. You get all the information related to each change, including flags or uh, who made uh, the, the change or uh, attachments or things like that. And the third one is uh, MLS stats or mailing list stats. Basically, it's uh, for uh, um, dealing with mailing lists. Uh, it's capable of parsing inbox uh, uh, archives or uh, mailman archives online. Um, again, it puts all the results into a database, organize it by, um, um, or nicely organize it in some tables, and you have, again, the, the usual fields into an uh, email message like sender, CC, time, date, subject, in content of the messages, and things like that. It's incremental in the sense that you can go today and get everything since yesterday, for instance, and uh, multiple projects can be stored in a single database for those projects that are having uh, different mailing lists uh, and you want to analyze them together. By the way, that's something that I forgot. The same happens with uh, CVS and Ali and Bicho. Both can also analyze several trackers in the case of Bicho and several repositories in the case of CVS and Ali in the same database so that you can do uh, cross queries and things like that easily. And then this was for metrics grimoire. Remember getting the data from repositories, putting it into a database. Then you have BIS grimoire. BIS grimoire is for doing something with, the, the, with that information. Something is mainly two things, doing analytics and doing visualizations. Uh, basically, the idea is since the information is into the database, you can always query it directly if you want. If you speak SQL, you just go there, do your queries, get information you may want. But you can also analyze it with the statistical tools, like R. We use R a lot. So if that's the case, if you speak R, that's nicer because you can directly connect to the database and uh, convert the, data, the tables into objects in R and then manipulate the objects with uh, statistical techniques. Uh, the data, therefore, can be filtered, can be inspected manually or automatically, can be improved, whichever. And, of course, it can also be combined, can also be cross-analyzed. You can get multiple data from different projects and compare them, cross-analyze them, etc. And, last thing, quite important, it also can be, can be visualized. Visualization right now, we are doing it from R, but also with JavaScript so that we can pr produce a, some uh, dashboard uh, to be accessible, accessible with a web browser. I'm talking about that in a moment. Uh, so let's consider that uh, this more are basically tools that help, help you here. So uh, the main issue here is that it's very difficult to predict the kind of information you may want or the kind of, uh, the kind of analysis you may want. So what we produce is different models for different kinds of information, and you can always come and write your own model either by doing queries in SQL and maybe from Python, or may by uh, coming to the R scripts and modifying them to, to, to uh, suit your needs, or came into the visualization and tinker with the JavaScript so that you can produce it uh, uh, better or more adapted visualizations. <coughs> so again, you have the URL for the project uh, down there. Uh, so uh, this grimoire is right now basically two parts. This first is the, the part related to uh, statistics and charts, and it's based on R. It's basically a set of R scripts, uh, which are, let's say, uh, glued together by uh, an R package, which are, we are, in fact, producing these days. So there is a very preliminary version in the, in the Git repository of the project, if you want to have a look at it. But the idea is that if you are familiar with R, you can import external packages into R, and those packages do some kind of a specialized analysis. So the idea is to have one, one package for doing a specialized analysis with the data produced with, by, sorry, by met metrics grimoire, so that you can have very simple things like time series of commits, for instance, over time. Um, so the idea is that uh, those scripts, or the, the R code, connects directly to the database, 
converts the information into our objects, and then filters, messages them, and so on. Uh, as the output, the output is usually some kind of a statistical analysis, or uh, some charts, or some uh, WebGL 3D graphs, or in some cases, JSON files. JSON files are used for visualization with uh, JavaScript later. So in many cases, the complete tool chain comes from uh, get the information from the repositories with metrics grimoire, analyze it with this grimoire R, produce JSON files, and visualize the JSON files with this grimoire JavaScript, which is the next and last uh, uh, package I'm going to, to introduce to you. So this grimoire uh, uh, JavaScript is just uh, um, a set of, uh, of um, scripts, most on top of uh, float R and things like that, that produce some visualization of the data. So they are uh, specialized in visualizing the JSON files produced by R or by other means. Uh, the idea is to have like live charts, like evolution charts, P charts, thing, things like that, tables, text, comparative charts, and uh, we are also supporting replacement in the screen so that you can uh, change things in the in the in the data if you need that. And we are also uh, um, uh, supporting in the next weeks, I hope. Uh, direct links to the uh, original information in the repository so that once you are seeing a set of commits, for instance, you can go directly to the Git interface, I mean the Git web interface, and see what uh, information about those commits, things like that. And it's very easy to integrate with HTML5 applications. So this is the, the, the example of how to run everything together. So it's, uh, it's a bit simplified, so if you do want to do the real thing, you have to, to look at the readme files and so on. It's just to, to give you a, an idea of what's happening here. So first of all, you run the tools for getting the information out of the repositories into the database. Those are CVS Anali, Bitso, MLStats. Once you have that, so at, the, at this point, we have all the information into uh, um, a, a database. Here you just clone the visualization repository, you change into it, and you run the R scripts that are producing the JSON files for the specific analysis. At this point, you can just point your browser to uh, the resulting directory and you get basically this kind of thing, okay? So this is the, 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 the screenshot, but you can also see the real thing. Uh, let me switch to the browser. This is the real thing. The real thing is a bit live in the sense that, in the, in the sense that you can go through it and see, you can, you can see that black, uh, black box over there where you have information about uh, uh, number of commits, number of, author, of authors, etc. So that you can run to any point in the project and understand what was happening at that point. So the, in this chart, the upper part is uh, commits and the like. The next one is um, uh, openers, closers, and all so of that in the ticketing system. And here, uh, and this part beyond here is the analysis of the mailing lists. So this is for MediaWiki, for instance. This, uh, you have it online in the, uh, in the net. Uh, this right part, you have some tables with information like top commuters, top closers for tickets and things like that. You can also have some information about uh, r summaries of commits, tickets closed, whichever. And you also have some information about how is the project performing in fixing or uh, closing tickets, which is this information down here. The, I'm not going to enter into all the details, but basically you have a specialized panels for, for instance, uh, tickets. And if you go to it, uh, basically you have same information, but now more detailed for the tickets part of the analysis. I came back to the presentation. Okay, this is the analysis for mailing list. Nothing new to say, just the uh, evolution of senders, receivers, and so on over the time. This is an example, uh, um, again, and a screenshot in this case of OpenStack of how they are opening and closing tickets. The next one is about, uh, it's about time to close. This is for CAD develop. Uh, all of the, each of the line mean, uh, represents how long they are taking to close 99% uh, of, the, of, the, of the tickets or 95% of the tickets and so on. This is the same information, but for, for LifeRay in another presentation. So uh, the upper one is how long do they take to close 99% uh, of the bags of the tickets for different periods of time. And this one is one of the things we are right now working in. This is Linux. This is the history of Linux. And I cannot enter into all the details, but basically 
This, each of these is a generation, people entering in the, in the project uh, in some quarter. So this is the last quarter. So this is autumn 2012. This is uh, spring 2005 when the project migrated to Git. So these are the first generation in Git of uh, Linux kernel developers. And here you can see how they evolved from 2005. So this is how many of them remain in 2007. This is how many of them remaining in 2012. So here you have an idea of how the uh, first generation of uh, Linux developers in the Git repository are retaining, uh, are retaining people over time. So how many of them remain in 2012? And the same for the, for instance, the, the, the generations in 2011. It is these four generations. How many of them remaining in 2012? I'm not going to enter into the details. We have a blog post which explains uh, a, a bit the idea, but this is just to show how you can do very complex analysis with R. So uh, the final idea is to go through our complete dashboard. dashboard. What I saw, uh, so, so showed you before was just uh, the, the current state of affairs, but we are moving towards things a bit more complex like, like this one. And we are also integrating with some other things. For instance, the alert project is producing detailed information for developers on recommendation on tickets, for instance, things like that. We are integrating that with statistics. Uh, in summary, uh, development repository have a lot of information, but it's not that easy to go there and, and get it. So uh, I have to finish. Basically, the tools help you in that task. You can do that incrementally. It's quite easy. And uh, just to last slide, if you have some question, of course, you are more than welcome. And I'm especially interested in knowing what interests you from the projects you are working in or you are interested in. That's all. Thank you very much.